If you've ever seen a surgery on TV, you know there is no room for error and everything needs to be sterile, organized, and ready to go. We're going to meet a person who makes sure that the instruments are clean and in their place so she can pass them to the doctor, or in some cases, a robot that the doctor manipulates to perform a surgery. Chris Jem introduced Gracie to her career as a certified surgical technologist at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. We're here with Chris Jen. Chris, you're a certified surgical technologist. What does that mean? Um, technically, I help the surgeon with anything I need uh, as far as setting up the instruments and anything we need for the surgery is my responsibility to have available the, the supplies and the instruments and anything we actually need to do the surgery with is my responsibility. So what do you do during the surgery itself? Um, I stand next to the surgeon or across from him and actually pass the instruments to him. For robotics, it's a little bit different because the surgeon's actually not at the field. He's sitting behind us at the console. So um, my job at that point um, is to feed the instruments into the robot itself and to take care of anything at the field that needs to be done, which when I say field, I mean the patient. How did you get into this? Um, actually, my stepsister was a surgical technologist when I was young. You know, we were five years apart, and she was a surgical technologist. And she used to come home and tell me great stories all the time. And I just fell in love with it. And I've been doing it 24 years, and I love it every day. Now, do you work in a specific type of surgery? Um, I do mostly robotics, um, some orthopedics, total joint procedures, and things like that. Um, but I'm not real, I mean, I'm specialized in those two things, but I do a little bit of everything. What type of surgeries do they use the robotics for? Um, we do GYN procedures, hysterectomies. Um, we do urology prostatectomies. Um, we do a lot of those. Um, we can do kidneys. We can do um, colon resections. Um, we're using it more and more with different specialties now. Is there a specific type of education or certification that you have to have? Um, there's a schooling. It's an 11-month um, school that you go to. It's a technical program. Um, it's for 11 months. There's also, you can go for an associate's degree in surgical technology now. Um, not everyone um, offers that, but, and it's not mandatory that you have it to come work as a surgical technologist. So do you take a certification test after that? Yes. Once you finish the program, um, through the Association of Surgical Technologists. Um, they offer a certification program, and it's just a test that you take. Um, and if you pass, you become certified. And if you don't pass, you try again. <laughs> um, most hospitals these days are re requiring that you get a certification within so many months of coming to um, work there. What's your favorite part about your job? Oh, the favorite, my favorite part is probably seeing something new every day. Like, we could do the same procedure, a prostatectomy, on four patients in one day, and every one of them is different. And that's what I love the most about it every day, is something new. What do you think is the most difficult aspect? Um, it's stressful. Every once in a while, we get into a stressful situation where, you know, you have to think fast and you have to move, and that's, it's stressful, but... Um, once you've been doing it for so long, you learn how to adapt, and if you stay organized and you stay on top of everything, then usually your day is really easy. Can you tell us a little bit about this robotic over here? Um, these are the robotic arms. Um, this is where the camera would actually go. It's a telescopic camera. Um, the patient is prepped and draped on the OR table. Um, we place the trocars into their abdomen, and then we actually bring the robot to the patient. So these arms move in and out, up and down, and different ways. And this would actually attach to the trocar that's into the patient's abdomen. And then once everything is attached, the doctor sits at the console here, and his hands are actually inside these things, and it actually moves the arms. So as a scrub tech, um, once all the arms are in place, um, we feed the instruments in and out of that um, for the surgeon and whatever he says. If he needs a different kind of instrument, then we switch those in and out. What skills do you think are necessary for this job? I think you have to be very organized. I think you have to be motivated. Um, I think you have to have a good memory. Um, I think that's a huge aspect for our career is memorization because you work with so many different surgeons um, day in and day out. Everybody's different. It might be the same exact procedure, but the same, different surgeon uses something totally different. So a good memory is 
always helpful in this field. And like I said, organization, I think, is the key thing. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us, Chris. I've loved learning about this. It's fascinating. I love it, too, and thanks for coming. Wow, it's incredible how technology is changing surgery, isn't it? Certified surgical technologists need to be detail-oriented and attentive, have good and quick manual dexterity, and be able to work well under pressure. If you enjoy the health sciences and would thrive on the excitement and possible stress of working in an operating room assisting the surgeon, this could be a job for you. Not all surgical technologists are certified, but it helps you to get a job as hospitals and surgery centers typically prefer the certification. You can find accredited programs in vocational schools or community colleges. For more information on this career, visit today's episode synopsis at rl101.com where you'll find a link to the Association of Surgical Technologists. There's more real life after this break.